Welcome back to the Stronger by Science channel. I am Dr. Pack, and today we're going to be talking about how strong should you really expect to get over time, or rather, should you expect to gain strength indefinitely, and will those massive PRs always be a thing? When engaging in resistance training, and specifically for those of you watching, when engaging in strength training and chasing those 1RM PRs, we often find ourselves in a position where we assume that those PRs will consistently come and never stop. And let's look at the latest scientific data on the topic. This was a study, this was a paper that I was uh, honored to have been involved alongside good friend and colleague, Dr. Milo Wolf. Um, the paper was published recently on sports medicine and it was titled, Using Powerlifting Athletes to Determine Strength Adaptations Across Ages in Males and Females and Longitudinal Growth Modeling Approach. You may be wondering, why did you have to read this off your phone if you were part of the paper? Well, we pre-printed this study over a year ago, um, actually a year and a half ago, and the title of the preprint was different to the one of the accepted article. Therefore, I needed to do correct by you and give you the right title. In order to explore how strength changes over time, we looked specifically at powerlifting athletes and how their strength changes over time. And the way we did that versus just taking a bunch of powerlifters and following them around for a few years, we used the data from the openpowerlifting.org database, which essentially has competition data from powerlifting competitions for many, many years. And we essentially use that data to better understand how strength changes over time in a population like powerlifters. We ended up looking at over 9,000 athletes and over decades of competitions. So as far as our analysis goes, we looked at age and body weight as continuous variables, but in order to make things easier for ourselves, we also looked at different age and weight class uh, categories. So what we found was there was a consistent linear log relationship between performance and time. Meaning that as time went on, performance gradually decreased. There was an initial spike in performance the first year of participation in powerlifting, but that slowly plateaued over the next few years. Um, in order to express it in percentages, during the first year of participation in powerlifting, there was a 7.5 to 12.5% increase in strength over baseline, something that reached a plateau over the next 10 years or so uh, and increased a further 7.5% on average. So it started at 7.5 to 12.5% over the next 10 years. So to be more specific, during the first years of participation in powerlifting, we observed an increase from baseline of around 7.5 to 12.5%, again, above baseline, and that plateaued over the next 10 years where it reached up to 20% over baseline. Keep in mind that's not an additional 20% every year, but rather another 7.5 to 12.5% over 10 years. So things looked amazing as far as strength increases the first few years of powerlifting participation went, but then things slowed down massively. Now, a few things that we observed that may not necessarily come as a huge surprise to you is that males were stronger than females when they started. Interestingly, older participants had slower rates of strength development and body weight also played a role in strength development with those that were heavier seeing greater strength development over um, the few years of participation in powerlifting competition training. Now, keep in mind that these results are somewhat in line with other um, sort of big data uh, investigations into resistance training and longitudinal growth modeling when it comes to strength adaptations. We had published a paper uh, a few years ago where we looked at individuals that engaged in minimalist resistance training. So they just did 20 minutes of resistance training per week. And mind you, we looked at data for over 14,000 individuals over the span of seven years. Um, they were essentially part of a gym chain in the Netherlands that their, their motto was 20 minutes of resistance training per week. So what we observed in that study was similar to the current study that we're looking at with powerlifting athletes. These individuals, they were not powerlifters, but they also observed 
about 30 to 50 percent increases in strength above baseline during the first year of their participation in resistance training and then over seven years that reached a level of somewhere between 50 and 60 percent above baseline so an additional 10 percent or so increase of strength in seven years keep in mind obviously that that population is different they only did 20 minutes of resistance training per week but we are seeing a similar trend in powerlifters as well. Obviously, those powerlifters probably did some form of resistance training before competing in powerlifting. But when we're looking at a population like powerlifters that specializes in training for one repetition maximum strength, I think we're gonna have a clear idea of what strength development over time looks like. Now, what does this all mean for us lifters in terms of practical takeaways doesn't mean that we're doomed and we should stop training with a high level of intensity or hope to get big prs not really but rather it's important to manage our expectations and understand that if you're an experienced lifter with a certain level of strength and you've been training for years and years and years there comes a point where things will massively slow down and that is normal that may not be directly as a result of your training and something that you're missing as far as your training protocol goes or as far as your nutrition goes or whatever but rather it comes with a territory if you've been lifting for 10 plus years and you are at a level of strength that is considered advanced to elite obviously that depends on the standards that you're using but if you're a pretty strong individual expecting that all of a sudden you're going to add 100 pounds to your deadlift pr or to your squat pr and feeling disappointed when not doing so may not be your best bet as far as your approach to training goes. Another thing that I want to add is that when we look at the Latella paper specifically, the one on powerlifters and long-term strength changes, we see that strength continued increasing for masters athletes well in their 40s and their 50s. And although strength decreases were observed over time for masters athletes over 60 years old, i.e. masters for athletes, it's important to note that the decrease in strength observed was very low, somewhere around 0.3% every year in decreases in total powerlifting strength, which is really good news because yes, strength gains will slow down and will eventually start decreasing as you're lifting well in your 60s. However, engaging in resistance training comes with a host of benefits, both from a muscle strength standpoint but and powerlifting strength standpoint, but also from a muscle hypertrophy standpoint. And things are looking quite bright as far as lifting for the love of lifting goes and maintaining a great deal of strength even when you're above 60 years old. So again, it's important to manage your expectations and understand that insane PRs will stop coming your way after a certain point. However, that does not mean that you should not train as if you are able to still make insane PRs. As progress is still possible and engaging in resistance training comes with a host of positives in addition to obviously powerlifting performance and strength uh, that just make your life better. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification icon, visit strongerbyscience.com for more cool stuff and stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you so much. Thank you.